time as manager at Stockport or Mansfield. Can you go into that for us? It's always difficult when you first take your first manager's job. And um, I'd, I'd made a decision. I could have carried on playing football at, at Coventry. I had two years left on my contract at Coventry. But I got to that point where to play the game that I played, I needed to be physically at my best. I was getting to 37, 38 and I felt it was time. Now, I didn't want to play down the leagues. And then the opportunity came up for me while I was at Coventry um, to, to go and manage Stockport. I went and spoke to Brendan Hellwood, who was, who was the chairman, a very good friend of mine, still is today. Um, and they were not doing well. They were eight points adrift at the bottom of the league or seven or eight points at the drift at about 19 games. And Ron said to me, leave that alone, Colton, because your first manager's job is always going to be the lasting impression. But the, the chairman was just a fantastic bloke. It really was. It wasn't like I never worked for football clubs. So when people ask me, well, how can you go from Sheffield Wednesday to Leeds? It didn't matter to me. I went to work for Howard Wilkinson. Mm -hmm. and it, it didn't matter that he was manager of Leeds United. You know, so I went to Stockport County because of Brendan Elwood. That was it. And we had a fantastic relationship. He knew the game. Luke Beckett. I signed Luke Beckett mm. because of the chairman. The chairman, had, he, he knew the game of football. So he, he, was, he, went, he said, Carlton, I've just seen a lad uh, play at Chesterfield, uh, Luke Beckett. He said, and uh, we, we need to get him. So I sent Kevin Richardson and Kevin Richardson said, we need to get him. Gaffer. So he said, I'll go. And Luke Beckett went on to do unbelievably well for Stockport County and me, you know? Yeah. Um, so it was a very difficult situation because the chairman loved the game. Um, he was putting in an awful lot of money. He was putting in £750,000 every six months of his own. It wasn't run as a proper f football club, as a business. He'd just write a check. Um, <laughs> he'd just write a check. He was, he'd just write a check. Um, he loved the game that much. Um, so I went in there. The, the wage bill was ridiculous for that league. And what I wanted to do, he, gave, he said to me, he gave me half a million pounds um, to spend. Um, and I thought I could keep them up when I first went there. And, you know, we went to Watford, who were top of the league the first game, and we, we got a draw. Then we played Norwich the next game, uh, and we won, and I scored the winning goal, and you think, oh, this is easy. <laughs> then the reality kicks in that the reason why they're in that position in the league is because they're not good enough players. Simple as. That, that's as simple as that. And the reality was that. I went to the chairman and said, listen, um, I think we need, we, we, we've not got, and these players were on three or four year contracts. Um, I said, we need to use that money that you've given me to pay players off, to balance the books. We had a great uh, youth team set up with Craig Madden. Uh, they had some great young players. So I said, let's get those players out. Let's pay them off, get them off the wage bill and give these young boys the chance. John Daly, who went up to Scotland, uh, Andy Welsh yeah. and whatever. But it's very difficult when you're losing games. You know, went to West Brom, lost 6-0, went to Burnley, 6-0. Then the supporters are calling you because they don't know the real picture of what's going on. Mm, you yeah. know, the plan was we, we'd go down and, 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 and have a go with these kids to come back um, in two seasons. That was, was the plan. And I sat down with Brendan and we went through what we were going to do. Um, and But it was horrible when you're losing week after week after week um, and getting beat. But I could see, and Rico could see, that the players were getting better, you know. Um, Aaron Wilbrams, and we, we, were, we were putting it together a very, very good team, and we could see that, and the chairman could see that. And I remember uh, we got beat, um, and Andy Welsh did a story about, uh, about um, what I did on, on um, New Year's Day, and it's the different type of mentality and he, he, he was talking about, oh, well, we were playing West Brom on New Year's Day and I got them all down for a drink um, the, night be the night before the game. We got beat 5-0 the next day. But it's a mentality. Big Ron did that. How many times with us? Night before the games, got us down for a drink. We played, we were actually in this hotel when we played Manchester City on New Year's Day and most of the players would have left here bollocks <laughs> and, and we ended up smashing them 2-0, 3-0. Um, you know, so it, 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 it's understanding that mentality at that level, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then what happened is we went down, we had a good side, and we, I, I rem still remember to this day, uh, Brendan turned up at my house. We got beat of uh, West Brom 5-0, and he, he came to see me, and I thought, oh, that's it, that's the end. 
And uh, he, he walked in, he sat down, he said, I'll never sack you. He said, I'll never sack you. He said, what you're doing is the right thing. I can see what you're doing. And that's a footballing man. Mm. He knew. He said, I'll never sack you. He said, you know, carry on doing what you're doing. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. The following season, uh, we finished with a bunch of kids, average age, 21, 22. I brought Ricky Lambert in. Everybody was looking at him. I, I said to the kid when I brought him in, I said to the chairman, I said, he said, 300 grand, Colton. I said, listen to me, chairman. This kid will go on and play for England. If he gets it right, he'll go on and play for England. 300 grand we give him and every, everybody was looking in. Eventually, Ricky went on to, to go and play for England. Yeah. Um, so that season, we, with a bunch of kids, we finished eight points off the, off the playoff place. Then, unfortunately, Brendan uh, called me uh, and said he wanted to have a, a, a chat with me. And we met in Sheffield and, and sat down. Well, Brendan lives in Sheffield, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we sat down. And, unfortunately, Brendan's wife wasn't very well at the time. Uh, and he, 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 he felt that he had to um, spend more time with his family. Um, so he decided to sell. And he felt that, at the time, that he was selling the football club in the, to the right hands. Uh, the gentleman called Brian Kennedy. What he did, he gave me a three-year contract with no break clause. Kevin Richardson, three-year contract with no break clause. Um, and that was his, his, his reward to, to me. Um, as I say, we're still big friends now. And at the time then, Northampton had came in for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I said to Rico, I said, come on, I, I've, I've, not a good, I've not got a good feeling about this now. And Rico went to me, gaffer. We've been through all that, the six nils, the five nils. He said, look at the team we've got now. You know, um, he said, we can do it this season. He said, we can get minimum playoffs this season. He said, we've put all this work into the young players. He said, we've got to see it through. And I just had a bad feeling. And uh, this guy, Brian Kennedy, uh, who was Sales Sharks, was in, I said the first day we had the meeting and... Um, while we're in his office on the first day, he's he's got me and Rico in there and he's on the phone, which is to me is just disrespectful, talking about getting cut class delivered to his boat in Marbella. Yeah. And that was it. So the opening day of the season, we're playing Wimbledon. Um, Luke Betty does his cruciate, which is a killer for me, 30 goals, you know, previous season, mm. does his cruciate. Mm. There, we were the better side in the game. Um, the, it wasn't agreed beforehand. Um, in half time, our players were really fit. At half time, their players were being sick because of the heat and whatever. So the referee delayed the game. We ended up losing the game 1 0 um, because he, he allowed them so much time to recover at half time. We hadn't had a bad start to the season. We hadn't had a bad start. And about six games in, I think six, seven games in, uh, he rang me. I think we'd only lost. One game, if I remember, maybe two games. Uh, we hadn't won, I think we maybe one drawn, but it wasn't a really bad start to the season. Um, he rang me and said, um, you know, Carlton, I'd, I'd like to see you. And uh, I said, listen, I'm not coming all the way to Manchester if you're going to sack me. If you're going to sack me, let me know now. And he said, yeah, I'm going to sack you. I said, fine, no problem. Um, I, I didn't really get on with him. I didn't like him. I didn't like what he did to the football club and... And Brendan still to this day has broke his heart because he he, he built uh, Stockport up from nothing, you know, put a lot of money in. And this man had promised him he was going to do this and that. And absolutely just, you know, what he what he did was quite simply, I was on £8,000 a week, right, as player manager. And um, he, he brought Sammy McElroy in on seventy five grand a year. And then... I then, later on, I, I hear that people blame me for the demise of Stockport. Stockport was still in League One Yeah. when I left after six games. They were still in League One. They went out the Football League. So mm -hmm. it's nothing to do with me. Then I had a problem because what happens in football when you become a manager, if you get the sack, right, now normally you have break clauses in your contract. So... Generally now, most if you sign a four-year contract, normally it'll have a six-month six or a year uh, break clause. So in, in effect, you've only got a year's contract. So why managers sign four-year contracts? It makes no difference to me, you know. But I had signed a three-year with no, no break. And Brendan refused to pay the money. Oh, yeah. And I said to him, I don't care whether how much money you've got, Brendan, 
I'm a man of principle. And you've got to remember now, the likes of Kevin Richardson, the likes of Paul Beasy, my staff, they've, they've got families. Yeah. I, I'm all right. You know, I've done well out the game and uh, I'm a loyal person. So we were having discussions after discussions and he refused to pay me. Then he made the biggest insult of whatever and I said to him, I'll see you in court. When he, co he, he accused me of mismanagement of funds at the football club. Now that's a slant on my character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so I was a year out of the game while this went to court. He phoned me while I was playing golf in Portugal. I was at my place in Portugal playing golf. He said, I'll pay you. I'm not playing the rest. I said, no, you've done what you've done now. I'll see you in court. You've accused me of what you've accused me. And fortunately for me, I tried to be, I'm not saying I've done everything right in my life. I've not done, you know, I've obviously not done everything right. And we all make mistakes and whatever. But I've always tried to be as, 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 as upfront and as truthful as I can. I've always tried to treat people with respect and I'm lucky that it always has come back touchwood to me. And uh, it was it was in for a three day trial. Um, it cost me a lot of money to get there. And uh, luckily for me, the club secretary come forward and said mismanagement of funds. He cut the wage bill from uh, the wage bill at the time was like three and a half million pounds in League One at that time. I cut it to one point one million with a team that finished a bunch of kids that finished, like I said, eight, nine yeah. points off the playoffs. Is that about I, the same level as other clubs? Just to get a bit of a reference of the wage bills of other clubs? Yeah. 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 And, th you know, at that time, that that was that's what your wage bills should have been. Okay. But Brendan, they got, they got promoted and Brendan pushed the boat out to bring players in. I sold Shefty Kuki to Sheffield Wednesday for 1.1 million, brought that money in. So I balanced the books off, mismanagement of funds. Mm. But the club secretary had come forward. It was a three-day trial. He threw it out on uh, mid-morning of the first day. <laughs> All the lads got paid out and he sold Aaron Wil Wilbrams that same day, I think, for 1.1 million to pay everybody out. And if you like that clip, you can catch the full episode here and you can subscribe to the channel here.